hello to all the wonderful people of Australia. I hope you're all doing well. This video is dedicated to you, my dear viewers, and today I'm excited to introduce a brand new solar power plant that you've never seen before. This power plant is perfect for regions blessed with great solar energy, just like Australia. Now, let's move on with the video. The home-based power plant I'm about to show you is truly outstanding. Many might mistake it for the White Cliff Solar Power Station, which used to operate in Australia, but its system is completely different. Others might even confuse it with a solar tower, which is an incorrect comparison, or with Stirling engine power plants. I should point out that this home power plant represents a new generation of such systems and can even be used as a solar farm. Take a look, the system consists of a 2.5 square meter solar dish. It also features a fixed 33 liter water boiler tank. And there's a power box. Mounted on top of the solar dish is a solar tracker. Notice how this tracker easily sends movement commands to the motors, allowing the dish to follow the sun effortlessly. The vertical movement is controlled via a cable system, and a 5 watt motor sets it in motion. Here's the control circuit for the solar tracker, powered by a small battery. So, there are two motors in all, one for vertical movement and a small, gearbox equipped horizontal motor that handles the dish's lateral motion. Now, as the dish adjusts its position, you can see the horizontal motor kick in and then return to its original spot. Notice how the concentrated heat on the dish causes the water in the boiler to boil. You'll also see that the pressure inside the boiler tank exceeds 15 bars. This hot, compressed steam is routed through aluminum tubes from below and enters the power box. I'm now opening the power box. Take a look inside the power box. High pressure steam enters the turbine, causing it to spin and drive the generator. I've insulated the steam turbine with rock wool to help dampen its noise. The generated electricity is at 60 volts, which is regulated down to 53 volts in the control box before being used to charge the batteries. And from here, it connects to a 3000 watt inverter, with power running through this cable to the output, which I use. Now, I disconnect the power plug and hook up an angle grinder. As you can see, this angle grinder consumes about 1100 watts of power. Well, now the steam from the steam turbine is being drawn out through this tube by suction. If I disconnect the tube, you'll see the steam coming out. This steam suction causes the steam to pass through this small radiator, which has a low power fan on it, allowing it to condense into liquid. Suction also occurs in this part. Nearly 80% of the steam condenses into liquid. Here, we have two separate water tanks. One is for mains water, and the other is a return water tank. This is a 24 volt water injection pump for the boiler tank. This is an automatic valve motor that quickly expels any remaining steam to allow for water injection. And this is a low power water pump to adjust the amount of water to be injected into the boiler tank and adjust the water to the appropriate amount in the municipal water tank. Now, if you take a look behind the power box, you'll see a mains water pipe that compensates for any water shortage in the system. Please note that this is a DIY, homemade system. This DIY system generates roughly 300 to 400 watts of power. 
And if we were to build this system with a proper industrial design, its efficiency would undoubtedly be much higher. And if it's manufactured on an industrial scale, it would definitely be more compact, and its complexity would be even lower than that of a washing machine. Of course, this system is still in its early stages, and its performance is best suited for sunny regions. This solar system is fully automatic and does not require manual intervention. You only need to clean the surface of the solar dish once a week. Although this is a solar thermal system, we can activate it at night or during rainy or cloudy conditions if needed. And you know that solar panels can't operate at night. Now we'll come back at night to see how the system activates at night. Let's continue with the video. It's now 9 p.m. and as you can see, it's completely dark, but the system is still working. In fact, we have a boiler tank in this system, and if we can heat it, the system will work like a day when there is sunlight. So, at night, I've heated the boiler tank using fossil fuel to keep it active. Of course, various fossil fuels or even biogas can be used for this purpose, but I've used natural gas here. Now, I'll open the power box and turn on the light inside it. You can see that the steam turbine is active, and the generator is producing electricity. If you look here, you will see that a city gas hose has been passed through this part and has passed through this route and reached under the boiler tank. Underneath the tank, there's a burner installed at an appropriate distance. This part is a small motor that draws air into the pipe. This is also a spark plug circuit. This is the thermocouple and this is the ignition wire and this is the wire related to the thermal switch. Down here, you'll see an electric valve used to control the gas flow. All these components operate automatically. Now, I'll measure the temperature of the boiler tank. As you can see, the surface temperature of the boiler tank is 179 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the tank's cover is 60 degrees Celsius. And the temperature on the structure of the system is 14 degrees Celsius. The important thing is that if the gas is used optimally, that is, if the connection between the flame and the boiler tank is proper, the gas consumption will be extremely low. However, it should be stated that the power of the solar dish will be much stronger than using gas and using a burner. Well, if you look here, I have an extra valve for steam testing and I open it. You can see that the pressure does not drop easily and there must always be a balance between steam consumption by the turbine and steam production in the boiler. The bigger the solar dish and the bigger the boiler tank and the stronger the burner, the more stable and stronger the output steam. 
Note that this system has several other interesting features in addition to electricity generation, so don't go anywhere and watch the rest of the this video. This system doesn't just generate electricity, it has other special functions too. One of the great advantages of this system is that it can provide incredibly hot water for showers, home heating, kitchens, or anywhere you need high temperature water, all without any special equipment. The heating power is amazing, and if the solar dish is large enough, we'll always have both electricity and hot water. If you take a closer look, I've installed a water tap here. In fact, the mains water has come through this path. And from here, it enters a coiled copper pipe inside the boiler tank, then exits from the other side and connects to this tap. Now, if I turn on the tap, you'll see some steam coming out at first. I'll place this glass container under the tap. This is an alcohol thermometer, and right now, it shows the sunny outdoor temperature at around 31 degrees. Now, I'll place it in the hot water inside the cylindrical glass and turn off the tap. You can see the water temperature is close to 70 degrees Celsius, but why I gotta remember that water boils at different temps in different spots on Earth, and it's 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. Keep in mind, if you reduce the flow of water by partially closing the tap, the water temperature will increase. Conversely, if you open the tap fully, the temperature will decrease. In fact, the copper coil inside the tank has only one loop. If it had more loops, steam would be continuously produced. Therefore, the optimal water temperature can be achieved with just one or two loops in the copper coil. Now, please don't go anywhere, as I'd like to show you another advantage of this system. Let's continue with the video. Before we move on, I'd like to do something. I'm going to make a cup of Earl Grey tea using this hot water and a tea bag. What do you think? Sounds good. Now, I'll place the tea bag in the water. The color of the tea looks just right, in my opinion. But it's still very hot. Do you prefer tea bags, by the way? All right, let's get back to the video. Another advantage of this system is that if you are in an area without access to drinking water, you can use it to produce potable water. Essentially, the steam from the boiler enters the turbine and is then condensed into liquid in this aluminium radiator. It's stored in a tank connected to this water tap. You can transfer the water from here to your kitchen or, if not needed, let it continue circulating within the system. Therefore, the less purified water you use, the more distilled water circulates in the system, reducing water consumption and minimizing scale buildup inside the boiler. In this configuration, the system can produce 50 to 60 liters of purified water per day. Now, I'll fill this glass with the purified water. The temperature of this water is too high to drink right now, and it won't cool down quickly. Okay. 
I'd say it's around 40 degrees Celsius. I hope you've been enjoying the video so far. The final points are crucial and I'd like to cover them in the next part of the video, so let's keep going. A key feature of this system is that the focal point remains fixed while only the solar dish moves. Moving this solar dish requires very little energy because, in my system, the dish weighs around 40 kilograms and it's easily tracked by two 5 watt electric motors. Of course, larger dishes will naturally weigh more. The important point is that my solar dish is small. If you plan to build this system, you'll definitely need to use larger dishes, over 10 square meters. Another critical component is the boiler tank. The larger the boiler tank, the better, and for larger dishes, you can obviously choose a bigger tank. If we are careful in building this system and create a high-quality setup, its efficiency will range between 30% to 60%, which is higher than that of solar panels. Of course, an industrial and specialized build can provide even better efficiency, reduce the system's overall size, and significantly minimize errors. Another key point is the steam turbine. The steam turbine must have good efficiency. The one I've used in this system is a handmade steam turbine, which naturally has lower efficiency and wastes some of the steam's energy. Therefore, the steam turbine should be a precise, industrial-grade model. Those who plan to build this system should take these points I've mentioned seriously. For those who want to understand the principles of this invention, check out the video link above my head. I hope I've been able to explain the system clearly to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer everyone. Hope you found this video interesting. Take care and see you next time.